Hey, what's going on there, everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer That Codes. And today I wanna to focus on the grid. Or if I say it in a better, you know what? I think I could use somebody else to say it in a much more better tone. The grid. Thanks a lot, Jeff Bridges. We appreciate that overtone. Yes, if you have not seen Tron Legacy, it's great. Music by Daft Punk, my favorite lines is literally Jeff Bridges goes, the grid. So anyways, back to the grid. The grid is the most powerful tool to use outside of the container, which we've looked at before in a previous video. I wanna go through how you can utilize the grid system within the Gatsby JS framework and how you can leverage different tools within Gatsby to make the grid truly shine. And with that, let's get started. And we're off. One of the most powerful tools to use in design is a grid. Now, if you look at any modern day newspaper, let's look at the New York Times, for example, they use a six column grid. There's one, two, three, four, five, six columns. So the same way online goes, the more you can structure your design based upon some sort of grid system, the better off you are. This is not a political post, just for the record. I'm not here to debate Trump, Obama, whatever else. I just wanted to pull a New York Times article and just state the overall grid style. So if you look at the design, this picture goes across four columns. This is a four column picture, and this title up here is a two column title. So the way you set design is you set it based upon a grid system. The same thing applies online. We're gonna use the grid to set up a series of columns. Now the biggest number we have to think about if we go into the grid system, I'm flipping back between the normal generic default get bootstrap, which is designed for HTML, CSS, and the React bootstrap system, which you can find at reactbootstrap.github.io. The React Bootstrap has the general information you're gonna to wanna to put in into Gatsby, and the actual grid system in the Get Bootstrap has more of a detailed documentation. I'll go over both of these back and forth. So I'm gonna go back to layout. The first thing we're gonna start with are two different pieces. We're gonna focus on rows and columns. In order to have columns, you have to have a row. Think of a table that has to have rows and columns. So let's start out with a very basic layout and we'll explain how this works. In order to have rows and columns, you first have to declare them within Gatsby JS. And the magic of copying and pasting means I forgot to put back my import container. So if I run this basic script from before, I'm running the Gatsby hello world, nothing crazy in here, and I should have, oh, I don't have it running. That's why it's not working. Gatsby starter, Gatsby something. What did I do? You think I was all set to go. Hello world, Gatsby demo projects, not Gatsby starter. Dropbox, if I can spell today, it's amazing. Hello world, Gatsby develop. I try to plan throughout this entire process and of course I space out on the word, Gatsby spelling it wrong and Gatsby starter versus Gatsby demo. I keep all my demo files like we have in YouTube here in a Gatsby demo projects folder. And of course there are Gatsby starter files, so myself included, type the wrong thing. The great part about coding, and I guess since we're here while well, this thing runs, the great part about the CLI is if you make the mistake, it's gonna tell you something, <laughs> right or wrong. So to me, I'm like, oh, why is it not working? Oh, that's right, I spelled something literally wrong. So if we run this, all we have in this design so far is this is a container. And we have our container set up from before. And what I wanna do is I wanna add some rows to this design. So if we go back into our area, I have to declare two more pieces. I have to say row and call. The rows have to go around the columns because it's you wanna unwrap it. Think of a row as 100% or in terms of of our design, we're using the number 12. That is our magic number. 
Here it is, number of columns equals 12. So whatever we do equals 12, we'll just say row equals 12 calls or 100%. And I'll make this into a comment. There we go. And we work on things, ideally, this doesn't always work perfectly, but I think about using the number 12 whenever possible. So variations of multiples thereof down the road. So in order to make a row, I'm gonna take out this container and say, oh, look at that. Hello, VS Code, you're right on it. Row and drop it down. So now in this direction, what I'm gonna do next is, I'm gonna say call. And I'll say, this is one column. And for the sake of consistency, I'm just gonna copy and paste. And this is the second column. I will say this is the first column. This is the second column. And this is the third column. Just also because I can see one, two, three, and it all lines up in a visual way. If I save this, Command S, Command Tab, and I go back to my local host, Check it out. One, two, three, this is the first column. Right here, right here, and right here. But here's where the magic starts. Throughout all this, the columns adjust based upon the framework you're working in, in terms of desktop, mobile, or tablet. Watch this. If I drop down, it's gonna move based upon these different designs where it's gonna then get narrower and narrower and narrower. This is good, but also bad, because when we did declare our design, whereby we said three columns, but we didn't specify how it breaks or how it moves. And here is now where the magic really starts to come in when it comes to columns. Inside the call area, I'm gonna say LG equals and say four. I'm then gonna duplicate that down to the second one and down to the third one. Now watch what happens when this actually moves back and forth. Oh, I lost something. Oh, you know what I did? I copied a bracket. There we go. Now we're back and running. Watch what happens here. Check it out. Notice that all of a sudden it went down to one column. That's because what happens is when it gets to the large size or larger, it goes four columns or three. Because four, if we do our little math, four times three equals 12. So if I put this one row lower, let's do a comment. So four times three equals 12, or four plus four plus four, equals the magic number of 12 columns. And thereby, I can then have it break based upon certain size. But here's the thing. Let's say I don't wanna break at the large size, I wanna break at the medium size. Well, let's say MD, 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 and now we'll save it. It'll get smaller, go to the medium, when it hits the small, now it goes one column. Anything below the medium goes one column or 12 columns across. Anything above the medium goes four. Now here's even something you can do to make it even snazzier. Let's say we have a fourth column. Let me bring this in, copy and paste. And this is our fourth column. Because we have to get to 12, three, 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 and three. Now we have four columns. Should populate right there. It went from four to one. So what if we want to go from four to two in this way? Well, we have medium, let's say small. If we want two columns, we have to say six for this design. So I'm gonna copy and paste Medium's three, this is six. Now yes, six does go over 12. I understand that, but I still think about multiples or halves of 12. 
So now if I run this, hit refresh to make sure it holds, four columns to start, two columns on the small, one column on the mobile. The lowest one, if you do not declare it, goes this design. Now if I wanna go even crazier, I could say small six or extra small XS six as well. So if I duplicate this, and I did save it. Let me refresh to make sure it did kick into gear. Now when I go extra small, it stays at that exact size. So you can declare large, medium, small, even XL. And these different pieces, if we go back to our container is where the breakpoints happen. So if I go back to the grid, I am using the get bootstrap section and I go to overview because our container is overview. Notice that we have extra small or XS, small, medium, large, and XL. And you can see the same pieces here on the react bootstrap.github.io. See the XS, see the XS. Those different letters come across all different platforms in the areas of React Bootstrap. So I can say MD3 small six. What I usually do is I go from large to small. So I'll say large to small, or I'll go small to large. That just helps me keep track of pieces. So yes, ideally I'm gonna choose one or the other one. I will not generally mix my small in the middle or the extra small because that just gets confusing. I try to go down in number or up in number. So pick a direction and stick with that. But this is how you can start creating your grid within, make sure that was saved, in your design. Now, do I recommend always going to column for the mobile design? No. This is usually in case I have pictures of some sort, which in fact, let's bring it in and take a look at that. So text is one thing, but I try to do one column unless there's a picture or a series of like squares that I wanna bring in. So let's actually do that. Let's actually bring in a picture. Let me go to hello world. I have this most amazing picture called placeholder image. It looks great. So in React Bootstrap and Gatsby, we have to declare or import. So I'll say import placeholder image from dot dot means you go out of a folder and then slash means you go into a folder. And I'm the person that copies and pastes file names because I'm the one to mess them up. So placeholder image. For also fun, an actual asterisk on this demonstration, I'm gonna bring in the React boots, not card columns. If I hit a comma, I'm gonna bring in the Bootstrap React image because that just does one more piece of it all. And let's take a look at that one. If we go into the areas of components, there's actually an image. And we'll get into this later on in a different video, but real quick, you can use the image, capital I, image, the circ or the source, and say rounded, rounded circle, thumbnail. What I like using is the fluid, because to me, what this one does is everything should move. So whenever I write pictures, I will use the Gatsby image a lot of times, but I'll also use the image fluid to bring basic pictures into my design. So since we are using a React Bootstrap, we can just type image and apply the image. So let's take this out and let's say image, because we did use image tag here, right here, circ or source equals placeholder image, always give it an alt, and I'll say one amazing image. It might yell at me for the word image. Every so often that I notice that if I say logo, picture, or image, that the actual terminal does create a hiccup. And I will say fluid, because to me, I want this picture to move in my design. Let's save it. Let's see if it does. Oh, it doesn't. I think if it was like if I said photo, 
let's see, for a while it did yell at me for those kind of pieces where it did say it's redundant by saying the picture in the alt. It's great, we're all good. Now we should go back and take a look. And there is one big placeholder image. Again, the reason why I use fluid is notice how the picture moves bigger and smaller based upon the design. That is intentional. I want that picture to grow smaller or bigger, and the word fluid maintains that. If I do it again, let me copy and paste this. Let's take out the second column. And I'm always the person that likes to hit the tab key or the command right bracket because to me, I wanna make sure I go indent in, indent out. Readability is always paramount to me because if I can't read things or they're not ordered very successfully, I might come back in six months and go, oh my gosh, where is everything? I have left this a complete mess. So I'll drop that, drop that. Now I have four photographs and I have four placeholder pictures. Let's put four more just so we can kind of have this go above the actual 12, we'll go 24. I'm gonna copy and paste the columns and I will save and here is a problem. That's because the rows and the columns give you space between but not up and down. What I wanna do is I wanna add some sort of tag around the image to make it work because to me there's either headings, paragraphs, or lists. And those are block level ele those are block level elements, meaning they will move up and down, sideways, back and forth. The image is an inline style or an inline element. It doesn't contain the block level design, thereby it won't move the same way. Whenever I have pictures and I do design work, I'm always gonna wrap them in either an H, a P, or a U L L I or an O L L I. In this case, this is a paragraph, so I'm gonna then take it out, type in P for paragraph, and because I can do a find and replace here, I'm gonna Command F, paste that in, find and replace, I'll do the last one down below, and look at, oh, it did that too, <laughs> including the first one. So I just find and replace, so that way everything down below now has paragraph tags, and now when I save and refresh, all right, that looks much better. Now the spacing is in the design around that. Now you can customize that down the road. We'll talk about how you can take space out of it, but for a general design, what I think about is just how things move across the design. So notice how the placeholder images move, grow bigger, grow smaller based upon the design, and if I take out the XS, which I can just say by XS equals curly bracket six, and I'm then gonna say replace it with nothing. Look at that. And in theory, what I should do, if I wanna be extra smooth, I'm then gonna replace that with no space, and it just tucks it in there. The reason why is I might wanna have pictures go full width across the page. You will notice it until we go back down there. And now the pictures do not go to column, but we went from one to two to four, or three to six, invariably we went XS 12. We don't need to type the 12 in because it is implied once we go down to that lowest level. So the numbers work well by setting those different designs. The last thing I wanna to do to this design is because if I look at it from a designer standpoint, this all looks great. But if I go to one column, the problem with this is that it doesn't actually line up. It actually, it's too far on the left. So as a designer, I would make two decisions or I would make one decision with two options. I could bring back the 12 if I wanted to, essentially saying what I could do is, let me go back to the paragraphs, and I have too many paragraphs. There we go, P, 
I could bring back the two column design, which is the six in this area right here, and thereby it's now a line because this picture could not fill the space. Or what I could also do is, and this is the power of the row up top, let's say I want to get rid of this excess six. So let's find a replace. We'll paste, we'll copy it in, and we'll put a space there. Oh, you know what it is? I don't want a space there. There we go. So if I want the one column on the mobile design and I know these pictures will not fit, I want to use a little bit of extra bootstrap goodness and it's called the text center. So if we use text center, the great part about the get bootstrap and the react bootstrap is they're the same. And so what I can also use is I can use the text center class name anywhere within my design. So the center align text on all viewport sizes. Now this is a paragraph. So anything that's block level will be applied text center. I could apply it to each one of them or I can just say row class name. So if you are writing JSX, which we are right here, row class name equals text center. And that will do is, if I come over here, these are all fitting full width, so they're impossible to see text centered. But the minute I go into a mobile environment, I'll do it before and after. Let's do that way. Let's move this a little bit this way. If I take the class name text center out and I save, it moved to the left. But if I say, oops, undo button would actually help versus paste, class name text center and I save it, now it goes to the middle. This just gives me a little more design flexibility as I think about how things move with the rows and columns. If we go over to the React Bootstrap column areas, I generally do not spend time working with smaller versus than larger spaces only because I think of a row being from the full left to the full right side. There are plenty of options you can use if your design takes you there. I just want to get you started in this tutorial because there are a countless, there are myriad of different ways in which to utilize the grid. You can count backwards and forwards by saying order 12 order one saying 12 goes last and one goes second. But as you can see, it's first, third, second, but then it's first, second, third. So I don't really use a lot of these other ways. To me, this gets into a lot more complications where there's middle, empty, middle, offset. This gets in a lot of more peace. I don't really move too much. And I usually use margins or padding to create the spacing. However, you can do this if you so choose. The grid is very flexible to work with within the system of React Bootstrap and just Bootstrap in general. But I wanted to show you how to utilize the grid system within the Gatsby framework for all your future endeavors. If this helped, I'd love for you to give me a thumbs up. I'd love to hear how this worked. If you got really confused, Leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on. And if you really, really love this project, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I am Hayden Adams with A Designer That Codes. Thank you for watching.